Morning. Let's talk about big ears. Big ears! Yes, it's entirely politically correct to call them big ears. It's when you fold the tips of your wings in to induce more of a descent. It's a rapid descent technique. All right, so why would you do big ears? Because you want to show off. <laughs> Not at all. All right, it's something that's very, very useful. I use it pretty regularly in my flying. Um, it has the advantage out of all the descent techniques in that you maintain your forward speed. So most of the time if you're soaring and you're near a mountain that's giving you lift, if you want to try and come down, you can't do a maneuver like a spiral or a beeline stall that's going to get rid of your forward speed because there your forward speed is zero. So then you're drifting with the wind and you get blown over the mountain pretty quickly. Big ears keeps pretty much all of your speed. Now some wings are slightly faster, some wings are slightly slower when you do your big ears. It depends on the rigging, on the tips of the wings. If you've got a fairly, I don't know, a fairly low class wing, um, that's, the tips are often trimmed to be washed out so that you're actually um, producing more tension on the leading edge and they reinflate really easily. But when you do that, you've got slightly slowing tips. And when you knock them out in big ears, you can actually get an increase in speed. Sometimes the drag from the big ear itself slows you down. So it depends on your wing. Either way, it's pretty close. It doesn't make a big difference in your speed. What it does make a difference is in your descent rate. So if you were gliding along at say one meter a second, sink rate, you put in your big ears, you maybe get two and a half. It's not dramatic, but it does give you a bit more of a descent. So, when we do the big ears, you'll see I'll reach out for the outside A-line. Now, if you've got three A-lines on that left-hand side, you want to be pulling the outer one. You may be pulling the outer two if you're doing really big, big ears. You don't want to be pulling this guy, the inner A-line. If you do that, you're going to have a front collapse in the center of the front and your wing will probably horseshoe forwards. Um, it might stall and it might uh, produce an interesting cascade. So don't do that. Make sure it's the outer A lines reaching from the outside. When you reach up for the, the line, if you hold like this, you've got very little pulling force. If you put your hand that way, you can grab hold of the line, turn and pull down. That gives you a very good, strong pull. So that's the way to do it. Hands that way, get the line, pull it, twist your hand and pull it down. Usually you have to stay holding on the big ears. Most gliders like to reinflate. Some gliders you can just let them go and they will stay stable like that and to get them out some gliders need a pump let's talk about that pump okay if you've got a big ears or an asymmetric collapse in and you're wanting to clear it if you do that all you're doing is shaking the air in the glider and it doesn't help it'll take you a long time to reinflate if you go down and back up, that sort of speed. One, one deep pump like that. That will bend the trailing edge down and push the, the air to the leading edge. So it helps clear 
the collapse out and it also helps the trailing edge cup the wind it actually comes down and scoops some of the wind and you get a flow on the undersurface of your glider so make sure you're doing nice deep pumps if you're trying to clear them some pilots recommend doing one big ear and then the other big ear um, I think this is out of a concern that they're worried that you might stall the glider by doing both at the same time I disagree I think doing that induces yaw in the glider because you knock one tip out that tip either moves forward or back usually back and then you do the other tip and you accelerate that if your timing is just wrong you're getting more of a yaw which can upset your balance particularly as quite a lot of gliders if you're in a pod harness when you knock out your big ears you find you lose your stability in your harness you can actually drift around like this a lot because you've lost that outer line that's stabilizing you so I recommend reaching up making sure that you're at nice trim speed reaching up and doing both of them perfectly symmetrically and your glider will keep straight there isn't a big effect on stalling the wing as you're going into big ears and you can keep it nice and stable same on the reinflation I reinflate symmetrically on my glider I like to keep things really straight if the ears stick in clear them one at a time to avoid slowing the wing down too much and creating a stall keep that airspeed up what I will say is you have to be very sure that your wing is above you when you do your big ears if you're in really turbulent air and your wing is going like this forward and back if your glide is forward and you do the big ears you can run the risk of doing a whole front nose collapse because your wing is really already close to collapsing then you pull on the big ears and you can get the whole nose going in if your wing is back behind you then your airspeed can be very low on the wing and if you pull in big ears at that point you could induce a stall and your wing will drop and then try and re re recover from the big ears so it's just that caveat with doing the big ears symmetrically is make sure that it's symmetric on both sides and symmetric it's above you vertically above you and you're not in some kind of pitch movement that'll help you stay away from the stall somebody having fun Whee! <laughs> right so assuming you've got the big ears in now and you're just wanting to get out of that problem area use half speed bar on any glider in any conditions half speed bar I'm comfortable with the, the feeling on the wing and I'm confident that any wing on half speed bar isn't critical so why are you doing speed bar and big ears when you've got the big ears in your glide angle has changed you were going like that now you're going like that if you think about the airflow over the wing the airflow isn't due to the wind it's due to you moving through the air so if you're moving through the air like that the wind a relative wind is coming straight on the nose if you're moving through the air like this the air is coming from underneath the glider which is much closer to stall point if you think of the stall is when that air can't go smoothly over the wing anymore and it separates so it's due to your angle of attack now you've increased your angle of attack by doing that so if you push speed bar you tip the nose down and you decrease your angle of attack you put it back in its safe safe range so it's very good to go half speed bar okay so should we do it first or after the big ears I would recommend doing do your big ears first get your wing nice and settled and then push your bar and then when you're finished you come off the bar first 
wait a few seconds and then clear the ears. The reason for that is that if you're on full speed bar and then you try to do big ears, your wing is already pretty close to collapsing on the low angle of attack and then you disturb the leading edge. So by doing your big ears at trim speed, you've got the best chance of it not destabilizing the wing and not having a big collapse. And then push out half bar. Now you've got a nice, maybe two and a half meters a second, maybe three descent. And you've still got good speed, higher than trim speed. And you can still maneuver just by leaning your body left and right. Don't use the brakes, just weight shift to do a turn. All right, some variation. Sometimes you might see pilots doing big ears and these gentle wagga, these turns left and right. Now that can help you if you're just trying to get down like out of a cloud. You've got your upper cloud base and you don't want to go any higher. So it doesn't really matter where you go. You can do these sort of wing overs, but doing that, you're losing a lot of forward speed through the air because you're doing turns. So it's no good if you're near a mountain. And the other problem with that is, as I mentioned before, sometimes um, when you do the big ears and you're in a pod harness, you lose that yaw stability. So if you're now doing these big wing overs, it's quite difficult to keep that yaw perfectly straight. You find you might start swinging like this. So it's not entirely comfortable to do that. I'd recommend do your big ears, go on a bar. If you need more, pull a little bit more down on your big ear lines to make it a bigger big ears. And then off you go. Another variation, which I like to do for only for really extreme conditions. Uh, let's say you're going You've hit some sort of convergence line and it's stuffing you up into the cloud and you really want a big descent rate. You can do big ears, speed bar and spiral dive. Now there I would say, don't follow my instructions. Go and do it on an SIV course first. It's an extreme maneuver, but it is actually surprisingly low G-force. Um, it's a less g-force than the same spiral dive so it's it's um, loading your lines less because the g-force is lower i have heard cautions from manufacturers about you mustn't do this because it overloads your lines your center lines but i think if you calculate the g-force with your weight those lines are well within spec you won't have a problem but yeah Take that with a pinch of salt. You do your own research and definitely do that for your first time on an SRV course. Ask your SRV instructor about doing something like that. It's pretty effective. So when do I use big ears? Well, top landing in lift is one situation. Um, often top landing swapping gliders or reviewing gliders, so I want to take off again. Um, when you're top landing with big ears, you do have to be a little bit careful that you don't stall as you drop into the sheltered area. If there's a sheltered area near the launch site, um, and as you're dropping into the lower wind speed, your airspeed over your glider is momentarily going to be dropped. And if you're on big ears at that point, you run a bigger risk of stalling. So I'd recommend if you can, get the big ears out before you land, or just be careful and aware, don't do big turns. Other times when I'd use big ears, well, if I'm up near cloud base and I don't want to go into the cloud, big ears and bar, very easy. Keep your direction, just keep straight. If you do white out, you can stay in that position. It's very stable, very easy to control. Just follow your compass heading and you'll come out nicely. So it's very gentle and very easy. The other situation that we have a lot here, 
UK airspace. We have to stay out of the airspace so we don't conflict with the big metal fish in the sky. So um, often you're wanting to fly distance, but you've got a ceiling above you. So the same thing again, big ears, speed bar. And that just helps me manage that situation. Okay, let's take to the air and I'll show you how to do this big ears thing. So I'm gonna go up for my big ears now. To reach up for the outside lines. There's the split A's that go out to the outer tip on the side there. I keep my brakes, my hands through my brakes when I do this. You could alternatively, the other grip I like very much is like that. That leaves your hands free. So you go up for the big ears lines. You want to pull them. I like to pull them symmetrically and slide your hands down that line until you find a nice balance point where the glider is nice and settled. You might need to pull a bit more to keep it balanced. And then you can apply a bit of your speed bar. You'll probably find you have to adjust slightly again on the amount you're pulling on the big ears. You let them out. You just ease your hands up. They'll come out on their own. Another situation where you could be using big ears, let's say you've got some really bad weather on its way, big gust front or rain coming and you're wanting to get down. You can keep the big ears in all the way to the ground. And it depends on your landing situation. If you're landing in some little pocket inside a forest and you've got a big wind shear that you're gonna expect, I'd get the big ears out, I don't know, 50 meters above the ground at least, and then just come in on normal trim speed. If I'm landing in a big open field, the wind's strong, and I'm just wanting to get down, I'll keep the big ears in all the way to the ground. You can, as you would normally flare, Give yourself another meter on top of that because your descent rate's higher. Flare a little bit higher. Just let go of the big ears and just do your normal flare. And that'll be fine. Do it nice and low. And you just clear the ears as you're flaring, basically. And that gives you a nice fast landing. Mistakes I've seen pilots doing with big ears. A big one is reaching up and grabbing the center lines, the center A's, instead of the big ears lines. So make sure you're on the outer A line, nothing in the middle. Um, other mistakes I've seen pilots do is try and do, put in the big ears really low um, in the turbulent area. And that can be your gliders are already destabilized and then they're doing big ears, throws them off. And another one is going onto full bar and then yanking on the big ears lines and that can induce quite a big collapse. So make sure you first doing your big ears and then doing your accelerator. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that roundup of big ears. Hope it makes it easy for you to use. Remember to practice this in nice conditions, over and over. Every flight that I do, pretty much, I do some maneuvers, be it wing overs, spirals, big ears, whatever. Keep those skills fresh, because when, you, when you're actually needing big ears, and when it's really extreme, you want it to be something that you can't get wrong. So don't just practice it to get it right, practice it so that you don't get it wrong ever. It's a very simple technique, it should be second nature and if you've got it in your bag of tools it'll keep you safe for a long time. Cool, hope that helps you. Thanks again to our patrons, you guys rock! You keep this channel breathing and full of fire and energy. Uh, if you'd like to give us more fire for the fuel for the fire, consider joining us on Patreon. Otherwise support us in the shop 
we'd really appreciate it and we will give you the best service in the world.